All right, we had a lot of fun making the trailer and showing off what Silver can do, but I know what you guys want is you want hands-on. You wanna dig in, you wanna see how can we use this to be more than just another preset collection. How is Silver 3 going to change the way we make black and white? How is it going to perfect our black and white photography? And that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna dig into the features. We're gonna talk about using the zonals. We're gonna talk about using the power of, of tints and modifications and three-dimensional controls. We're gonna talk about using the whole tonal range and making amazing black and white by being able to visualize and see in terms of that tonal range and let's, let's just jump in and see what Silver 3 can do and see why it's the most powerful black and white conversion kit that we've ever had. All right, so let's jump into right Lightroom and just get started. Let's look at, first of all, the basics of Silver, the features, the categories, and then look at how combining those can give us different recipes on our image. Of course, all of our images are going to be different, but we're going to be able to cover a lot of how you can really customize and take control of your black and white right in here. So you can see I have the presets installed. We're not going to cover installation of presets in this video. We have uh, the installation of presets video on the site if you need some help installing presets. But the bottom line is you're going to want to get those presets, the whole folder installed into the develop presets and bring them in there. So if you need some help with that, just go to simefx.com forward slash guide and there's a video on that. The first thing we have is just some basic utilities. We've tried to design Silver 3, and, and I really did a lot of work to think intuitively. Okay, what do we use the most? What's going to be the easiest? So you'll start with these basic things that are, that are really versatile. Exposure up, exposure down. Now, of course, you can go right over here and you can use exposure settings, right? That's one of the beauties of, of working directly in Lightroom with the RAW file, is we can apply an effect and then we have all these controls. So some people say, oh, presets are for, are for amateurs, right? You should just do it manually. I, I don't even do that with my own work. I go and apply a preset to get close to my visualization because just in this two seconds of mousing over, I've just tried 20 different variations that would take me half an hour to do here. So I, I get close here and a lot of times it's perfect, right? But if I want to adjust things manually, I absolutely encourage you guys to dig in, see what those sliders say, look at what each preset's doing because it's actually going to make you more intimate with your light and it's going to help make you a better image maker. But we have these basic tools like exposure so we can just quickly click and get where we want to go. The vignette is a basic vignette, right? Uh, that's the classic vignette. The O vignette is a radial. And so if you shift M, you can see that radial and you can adjust it so you can move it. It's darkening what's outside of the radial using the radial tool. So it might look great as it is, but you might want to move it over, for example, and put it right on her face. And then you can shift M to get out of that. So uh, that's a customizable effect, and that's why it says Shift M on the O vignette. The master grads, clip grads, uh, we'll look at some of these on some other images because this one doesn't need it, but you'll see we have these different grads that use gradients, either classic gradients or gradients using the new uh, masking tools. Uh, if it has a gradient or a, or a radial or local correction or something like that, uh, it, uh, it, it's indicated with the L for local adjustment. And that way you know that you're applying a local adjustment. Okay, so these are our basics. And you can see that we can actually reset the locals with this preset. That's going to take vignettes, gradients, radials, and just reset them. You can reset all with the reset all presets. Okay, so reset all is, is all the develop settings, all the gradients. But unlike the shift command R, the reset command in Lightroom, uh, it's going to leave alone things like spot removal and crop and stuff like that. And that's why we've, for years we've had these reset presets in here. Now let's go down to the first and primary category, which is uh, the one silver. Again, you can see the category is a reset preset. Reset base means it just resets the basic develop presets and not the gradients, not the, the, the radials. Uh, things like that. So if you want to leave those, if you've got like a radial or gradients and you want to leave them alone, but you want to reset the basic settings, you can just use that reset base. And we've put reset all and reset base throughout the collection. So it's always just a click away. Now, Simple Silver, again, we've designed these to be as intuitive and kind of uh, top down as possible. I wanted the things at the top that we could use all the time. And you'll see that the Simple Silver, a lot of these look really good on this image. There's a lot of versatility there. 
in terms of what kind of looks we want. So, I mean, silver skin is great for, for portraits. You know, we can silver skin too, a little bit lighter. We could get into some HDR looks. I mean, there's a lot of really versatile things that are going to give it a lot of different looks. The thing to think about one silver is simply this. It's, it's a go-to. These first set of presets are meant to be, let's get a good conversion. They're meant to be versatile. You'll see the pure contrast ones, which are great for images that you really want to bring out the punch in and the detail. The HDR silver, incredibly versatile presets. Just a lot of universal things. If, if silver three was just these presets, if you had a collection of just this first category, you could get beautiful black and white conversions. That's the baseline of one silver. These are meant to be quick one clicks that you can use as is or continue on and do the mods which we're going to look at. Now we get into zonals. Zonals use the newest technology in Lightroom. Okay so let's actually go to uh, another image here and let's take and I'm just going to reset all real briefly. If I apply a zonal and let's go down to those zonals. Zonals are one clicks plus magic gradients, right? They're the magic zonals. And so if you say, all right, give me a zonal uh, like how about magic dynamics, okay? Let's bring out that dynamic range. And so here's all this dynamic range, and we see that it's a one-click preset, but if I click the M key, you're going to see these gradients. Typically when I've done a gradient uh, that's controlling dynamics, and what I mean by that is this gradient at the top is for highlights, and it's doing these, these things to the image like this. But see what's happening here. Let me mouse over this and you can see if I hold the mouse over, see what's red? This gradient is only affecting the highlights. And this is a feature that's on the newest versions of Lightroom and that is the range mask. We have color masking and range masking. In, in a basic sense, this is using zones. And so in these presets, I've designed them and we've said, okay, let's use presets that bring out dynamic range and detail uh, with things, but let's use gradients that do settings that apply settings only to a certain tonal range. If you look at the bottom, this one is affecting shadows. And different presets are going to affect, affect different ranges. So this is going from 0 to 60. So basically from zone 1 to 5, this one is affecting, right? Some of them only select the first couple zones. Now bear in mind, Lightroom does not have specifically a zone tool, okay? If you actually want to see zones and control individual zones, that's where we get into Photoshop and Loomis actions, and they're immensely powerful for that. But it's really cool because we've been able to cross over now, and we've been able to say, okay, let's have, let's have these zone controls that can get us that, that level of, of control in Lightroom, and then we can carry that through further into into Photoshop. But let me reset this, for example, taken over in the Twin Cities. If I do the Magic Sky Grad, which is right up here, and you can see these ones at the top are utilities that are only grads. Did you see what just happened there? It, it gave me, on this one, is just a basic darkening grad. But what's happening, so we have this grad, okay? It's darkening and doing some other things, but it's only affecting the mid-range to the highlights. It's not darkening our shadows. And so what we're getting from that is we're getting this smooth, nicely feathered, selective control that just works. And that's a really powerful thing. Okay, let's go back. And we're just going to keep taking a look at some different images here. Okay, so let's take this, this lady here. And what do we have on this? Let's go in and let's convert this. Let's use Silver Skin 3 really brings out her, her skin tones, nice detail, nice clarity. And so we see there's a couple different versions. If they're the same name but different versions, it's designed to give you some variations, right? Maybe one's a little darker. Maybe one has a little bit different channel process. Okay, so we've applied this in the one silver. We could also go down to the zonals, and the zonals would apply a one-click of various types, but it would also be combining that with gradients, okay? Then we have the bold silver. Bold silver is just what it implies. Now, these ones don't apply gradients. Those are kept within the bold silver so that you know what you're working with. Bold silver is just stuff that tends to be a little intense. So it's in a couple categories down just because we might, we might want to have uh, some go-to presets but maybe not have them right at the top because some of these will be specific to certain images. And you can see these are doing very bold things with channels and details. I mean, look as we go through here 
how differently each effect is affecting her flesh tones and the skin. And we can just get so many beautiful effects here. All right. So we can apply one of these. Next, we have the detail mods. Again, we can go through and these are fairly simple. We can do uh, the, the white pop, which is going to bring more into more into the lights, right? It's going to backlight those highlights. And if you have an image that's a little flat, that's really good. Now, detail mods, mod specific things, meaning you'll notice that if I have this preset installed and I apply the clarity pop mod, it's going to add a bunch of clarity, which for this image is too much, but you'll notice that it left my basic settings alone. So at the top, we have one clicks, we have zonals, and we have bold silver. These are all global processes. They're doing different things and they're doing some of them with gradients, some of them not with gradients, but they're basically changing everything about your image. Once you get down here into detail mods, now you're getting into mods that leave everything else alone. And this is where you can combine and basically be additive. You've applied one of the first three categories. Now you're going to come down here and you're going to say, what can we do? right? Let's do a filmic combo, which is, is for noise and grain, right? It just helps with our detail, brings a little bit of noise and grain. Let's, let's do a little bit of sharpening. Let's add, let's add some grain into the image. And so you can just kind of apply these and mix and match the look that you want to get until the image is the way you want. And for some of these detail things, it can be good to zoom in. Now we come down to channel mods. Channel mods are affecting this stuff right here. And this is like the equivalent of, of filters back in the film days, but it's so much more. Because remember, if we adjust channels, we can change specifics of an image. And that's where the magic in a black and white conversion really comes in. Now, all the one clicks in the first three categories use all these different variations of channels, right? And so you'll get a lot of variations with that. But let's say you have a preset you like, but the channels aren't quite right on that preset. You can go through and start applying different filters. You can mouse over and you can leave all your tones alone, but get these immensely powerfully different mods. And some of them for this image are intense and don't look good. Some of them look amazing. There's the portrait mixes, for example. So maybe I've applied a portrait preset, but I want a few different variants in the channels. Rather than just going and tinkering around, I can come down to channel mods. Channel mods are marked with that CP designation, but they're all in this category. And what that means is it's affecting the channel process. It's, it's, it's affecting the black and white mix while leaving alone things like our, our shadow and our highlight and our curves. So we can be adjusting the dynamic of the image while maintaining the dynamic range, the detail, the tonal values, okay? Next we have the color tint mods. These are just what they describe, but there's more than before. So the tone mods are split toning and those will bring us some tone into the image using the split toning features. And I've been carefully crafting these tone mods for years and years and years to try and get good rich tone without overdoing it, without being over the top. But the new controls in Lightroom with, with the masking and the, the luminosity limitations have allowed us to do other things. And that's where the 3D mods come in. The, the ones that say 3D combine usually a little bit of split toning, but they also add a gradient. They add a gradient and that will allow us to apply different levels of things at highlights and shadows. And of course, since these apply a gradient, it's, it's a gradient preset. And the way Lightroom works, if you apply a preset with gradients, it's going to overwrite other gradients. And that's why we keep everything isolated. So you always know what you're overwriting, what you're applying. But at the end of the day, guys, the reality is you can just come in here and play around. Okay? There's no, there's no point in me going over what every single preset does because it's going to be different on every image. You can kind of tell by the names, right? You can see Razor is meant to be crisp and sharp. Infrared gives an infrared look. Pure contrast brings out intense detail and contrast. Simple silver is a general purpose. HDR is about dynamic range. So you can apply one of those one clicks and then come down and you can say, well, let's apply a tone. Let's apply, let's apply a channel mix. So here's a selenium and this is only applying a split toning. Let's reset our tints. If I go to here, this will reset the gradients and the tints since those are what's included in this category. Okay. Now let's apply selenium. Let's apply 3D selenium. And you can see that they're very different in how they work. Selenium is kind of giving a, just a simple traditional blue cast, whereas 3D selenium is uh, coming in and it's bringing in gradient details 
And so it's affecting things specifically in certain tonal ranges. Now bear in mind, when it has that L indication and there's a gradient, you can come in and you can select the pin for that gradient and you can manually control that gradient if you want to do more with it, okay? So for example, we can come in here and we can say, let's grab our gradient. What does it affect? It's only affecting zero to 17, which is deep shadows. I could expand that and you would see that color tint to start to expand just like I could do with the highlights, expand that more into mid-tones or shadows. So bear in mind, while you may apply these presets, you're dealing with that raw environment and everything you do, you have control over as you go through the image. Okay, so we've seen that. Now let's actually get in and let's uh, have some fun looking at some of how these different images were made. Okay, let's look at uh, just some different effects so you can get a feel of what effect to, to use on your images to get the look you want. Let's come into here and again we're going to take a few of these and we're just going to reset them. So I'm going to reset all and okay here's this image out on from the street in front of the hall and what am I going to do? I'm going to go down and I'm going to use one of the pure contrast. These work great if you want detail. Pure contrasts are actually pretty amazing presets we put a lot into, and that's why there's four in them, because they actually do a lot with dynamic range control while using clarity and different sliders to very subtly maintain detail in a very powerful way without just seeming over the top. It's not going to work on every single image. You may find, for example, that on portraits it's not always the best, but on architecture, on outdoor, on landscape, on a lot of black and white scenes, it's just really amazing. Pure Contrast 4 looks good, but it's a little bit dark still, so I'm just going to up the exposure by a half, and that's all there is to it. That was just two presets, okay? Let's go back out, and let's take another one that's a little more complicated. And to remember that, I actually made a note of what I used, so I could show you guys what's going on and know what happened with this image. This was, okay, a combination, and you can see how we can use a single one-click or just two clicks like we did in this one, or we can take an image like this and really blend it. This is pinhole, exposure, O vignette, 3D selenium, white pop. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in here. So let's actually rebuild that. Let's see what this image looked like at the beginning. Let's go back. And here's this neat image of these elephants, right? Let's go down and let's go to the zonals. Let's use that pinhole vintage, which is actually doing things with those magic gradients and stuff all in one click. There's the pinhole, okay? Now let's go up. And let's do the exposure. I want it a little bit lighter, okay? We're, we're additive now, right? We've done the pinhole. We've added the exposure, which only affects exposure. Now we're going to do the O vignette. That's that radial. Very versatile tool. Again, it's only adding that radial. And you can see that it's kind of darkening those edges. I can grab it, and I'm actually going to change the shape. So I went Shift-M. I clicked that pin, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it down here so it's spotlighting the elephants themselves, okay? And there it is. Now, let's continue going down. We still have all that detail and tone, but let's see if we can do a little bit more. Let's go down to the mods. So we go to the detail mods. Let's, uh, let's bring out maybe the whites a little bit more. So I'm gonna use the white pop mod. Okay, just to bring out a little more lights. Now, you're, um, you notice I'm watching my histogram. I could also use the, the bold white pop mod to bring out even more, but I'm pushing my highlights a little far. Even though there, no, there's not a lot of clipping, I'm pushing them a bit. One of the things you're going to see that's really magical, and it's going to happen behind the scenes, but some of these presets, for example, like the Magic Sky Grab, which we'll look at, it's very versatile. Because it's, it's applying a gradient, right? It's applying a gradient that affects a certain tonal range. That gradient is actually updating in real time as your image changes. And it's allowed us to do some really powerful things for controlling dynamic range and, and keeping the clipping down and stuff like that. And we'll come back to that a little bit more before we finish. So I did the white pop mod. Now let's go down and let's look at some different, uh, some different tones. In the past, in the past, we would apply a tone like selenium and it's just going to give us that nice, nice, little bit of blue tap cast. Now, if you're into selenium or platinum like I am, you know that even done in the darkroom, there's many variables of how it looks. And we actually have an action set for Photoshop dedicated to sel uh, selenium and platinum effects because it's so complicated. And it goes way deeper 
than we can in Lightroom for those who really want an authentic looking classical platinum, for example. But I'm actually really impressed what we've been able to do with the 3D tools. So even though we have some of those basic classic split tones, let's run the 3D selenium on this one. And you're just going to see so much more depth because we've allowed an effect that I've been able to apply specific tonal values, color manipulations to shadows versus highlights and control those specifically here. And you can adjust them as well in the luminance value of this mask. And so I can go in here, I can select my bottom pin, which represents what shadows are being affected, and the top pin. And you can come in here to these 3D effects and you could change the color, for example, right? If you want to make your own mix, you can change uh, the range of tones that it affects. And if you want to, you can even save variations of those presets. And so that's one of the ways that really interacting with these presets is going to help you to actually know Lightroom better and to get, get closer to the tone and what you want to do with it. But in just a few clicks still, even though this was a combo recipe, we went from there to there with, with just four or five presets and really were able to refine that. Let's just look at a couple more images here and uh, kind of see what we can see. Let's go ahead and reset this one. And you'll see that this is a, a portrait I did on the beach. We actually did a video of this session in Photo Kit last year. And it was done with a single strobe. Really like this portrait. And let's actually go down and let's pick something for this. Let's use the satin threads. Now you'll notice we've done a lot with channels. And I get deeply into channels and in how they affect our black and white conversions. And that is a very important thing to study. So we have this, this basic conversion, right? If we were just to go to zero, let me actually go back. If we were just to desaturate an image, we have a monochrome image, but there's nothing there. There's no life to it. And this is a lot of times the mistake people make is that thinking a black and white image is a desaturated image. And there's so much more to that. Let's apply silver skin. And it looks really good. Now notice that silver skin is making her face look good. And that dress, that, that pink, bright colored dress is coming out fairly light, right? And different presets will make those tones render a little bit differently. And so this is where choosing your preset is very important. Satin threads leaves her face very bright, but it darkens that dress and really gives a beautiful contrast between the two. Now, if we went down, we could do the same with the channel mods. If we found a preset we liked, we could actually do all kinds of different things with the different values. So for example, this makes her dress white and her face look terrible, right? <laughs> this one makes her face extremely bright and the dress extremely dark. This is the magic of channels. Now, sometimes you want to go play with those channels and get something bold. The, the one silver is right up here at the top. You're going to find they are just very versatile and just give you a lot of control without a lot of hassle. I still really like the satin threads because it's a nice balance. I'm going to use the satin threads and then I'm just going to apply the O vignette to kind of spotlight her a little bit and bring in those details. And now you see it's kind of darkening the surrounding area and her face is just gorgeous and we've got lots of detail. It's just really working out well. Okay, let's look at just a couple more here. I don't want to go on for too long, but I want you guys to see a variation of different kinds of images and how they work. And if you guys enjoy these videos, we can do some more videos where I'm just taking a, a single image or two and doing a whole video dissecting the black and white of that. And so if, if, if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, digging in, we'll do that more and we'll talk more about what makes a black and white really amazing. Okay, now here's this one taken down in Mako in the jungles. And let's, let's actually look here. I'm going to reset this and we're going to go ahead and reset it. And you'll see that this is a beautiful image taken early morning. We have the mists. Uh, it is nice, all right? It's a little bit dark. I'm going to run the Jungle Waters preset first, okay? And again, you can see I name things to be logical. This is called Jungle Waters, but the truth is if you had an image with a river or a water, this one's probably going to look good. It doesn't mean these other presets wouldn't look good. It just means that this one looks really good. Now, I feel like maybe we need a little bit of exposure going on. Let's brighten the exposure a little bit on this one because I think I was a little bit off. One of the things that we talk about is using the whole tonal range. And this is, this is never more important, I don't think, than in a black and white. 
what I want, and I'm looking at my histogram here, and you can see I have a tiny bit of clipping here. I'm using pretty much the whole range right now. Now, if I wanted to pull out more, I could use something like the bull backlight, which is going to enhance those whites even further. And you notice that I just really made those whites pop, but I didn't kill my, my highlights, right? Now, I think this looks great. We can see if I hold my, my in mouse over those clipping tools, there's a tiny bit of clipping up here, which I could easily solve with a brush or a gradient, and a tiny bit of clipping in the blacks right up there in the trees, and I mean so tiny that I'm not even worried about it. I usually don't mind a tiny bit of black clipping. I do try and get rid of white clipping because when we print, that pure white on the paper can be a distraction. Okay, now, and this is where something like the clip grads can come in, because I could apply clip grads to this, and it's going to apply limitation presets. You notice that histogram changed. I no longer have clipping now, except I have a little clipping in the shadows, okay? So I could bring some of that back if I wanted to, but I don't mind a little clipping in the shadows. Maybe not quite that much, though. Let's turn on those shadow clips and just bring a little bit of that clipping out of those shadows by bringing the blacks up just a little bit. And so just to kind of dial it back, right? We don't want, we don't want too much clipping in those shadows. There's different ways we could affect that clipping. But the clip grads here allow me to say, okay, I'm going to limit the highlights, only the highest of the highlights, right? This is affecting pretty much zone nine and a half plus. And then we see the one down here that's affecting some of the areas down in our deep shadows. And we can, of course, control that if we want to have some more specific control to manage the different settings. You can always manipulate them manually. But frankly, I actually liked this one before I did those clip grads because it really was a powerful, powerful effect. So I'm just going to kind of undo here, put that bold backlight mod in, and you can see that we have this image that truly is, look at this histogram, this is using the entire tonal range. And when I talk about that, I think that's very important because when you think about the tonal range and the details in an image, and let's zoom in, this has beautiful detail from black to white. And that contrast is what really brings out a black and white and makes it come alive. There's a richness here that you wouldn't have if you tried to say, oh, let's munch everything into the midtones and, and make it HDRified, right? It, it's good to use highlights and shadows and all this stuff, but if we push everything into midtones, we just lose. We lose the contrast. We lose the, the detail. And pretty soon everything starts becoming gray. That's what's happening. A lot of times when, when we don't understand uh, enough about the range. And when I, when I realized that, when I started looking at the histogram and saying, wait, I can go from zone zero, black, to zone 10, white, and use all that range in between. And that means I have that full 10 stops range of contrast. Does it mean every image needs to have a histogram that looks like this? No. But when we munch everything up into the middle of the histogram, we do lose a lot. Okay. Let's take something that is maybe a bit off in camera. Uh, this one here is, is a good example of that. Let's reset it, and you'll see that it is very dark because I wanted to maintain. It wasn't necessarily an accident. I wanted to maintain that sun and not clip it. And you can see that even in the raw file, there's just a tiny bit of clipping that's truly fully recoverable right here in the sunlight. Okay, And we can just really bring that out if we need to. Now, let's go down, though. Let's use one of the HDR Silver presets, because these are very powerful for maintaining the dynamic range, and we've, we've really pushed the limits of what Lightroom can do with dynamic range in Silver 3. I'm going to click that HDR, and boom. You can just see it brings out a ton of dynamic range, but look what's happening. And again, we're back to that emphasis of using the whole tonal range. This here is applying this preset, but it's doing so with a very minimal amount of introduction of clipping, right? So if I turn on those clipping indicators, we can see that we're going all the way down almost to pure black, but there's detail all the way to the deepest of the shadows. Tons of information to print here. And then we have detail all the way up into the highlights with just a little clipping. This is where a quick mod like the clip grads could really come in because you could apply the clip grads and it's going to affect those highlights only in those highlights, right? So now we have those dynamic clip grads, grads applied. I could actually increase the exposure here and push this until I start getting red in the clipping, right? And you see what's happened. Even though I'm drastically increasing the exposure, the, the clip grads 
are acting in real time to hold down the clipping. And so I can basically say, well, how bright do I want to go? Obviously, if I went high enough, well, technically, if I went high enough, it's clipping. But even this, what's happening is the clip grads, right? We applied the clip grads, and those are using the dynamic masking that's saying, if it's this light, hold it back, okay? And even though this is far too light, I'm actually pushing this multiple stops up, and I'm getting no highlight clipping because it's holding back that highlight clipping when it reaches above that level. In Realidad, what I want is probably about a one-stop exposure increase, and you can see that in just a few clicks, we went from here to here, and it's absolutely amazing. This isn't to say that there's no good tools or options or controls in Photoshop and elsewhere for working on black and white. I, I, I don't have prints on my wall that haven't been into Photoshop because I can go in and use Loomist and zone controls and burning and dodging in more details. But one of the things to remember, and one of the reasons for years I've advocated really getting serious about the black and white in Lightroom is because we're working directly with this raw file. We have a first generation file and, you know, of course, you can use these on JPEGs, but most of us are shooting raw, and you have that first-generation file, and you can just pull out so much information in that first-generation file and really draw out everything that that raw file has to offer, okay? So let's, again, take this one. This is a very sweeping scene up overlooking Zion. This was actually taken on an infrared camera, and you can see that I've taken an infrared file and already done... Uh, the basic uh, conversion for the infrared uh, profile that I have installed in Lightroom. Because when we come out of the camera from infrared, it looks like this. But this is with my 5D Mark II converted to infrared. Okay, so there's the one that kind of balances it out and, and gets rid of the red cast. And this is just a custom profile that was made for my camera. And uh, that's, that's something in our other videos where we talk about working with infrared. There's stuff on there if you have a true infrared camera or you're filtering it. But I did make a few presets with those true infrareds in mind. And so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna take uh, a Zion, which uses gradients. And that's not to say you need to worry about this. You don't need to say, oh, I should only use the infrared presets for infrared, because they're gonna work on all kinds of images. Apply the images, see what looks good, see what fulfills your visualization. But I actually did build some of our, our bold presets in here with true infrareds in mind so we can really get beautiful results. And this one just kind of really brings that out, all that detail. I'm actually going to use the exposure minus one half on this one to darken it up a little bit. And you can see again this emphasis of using the tonal range. Guys, I am telling you, if you start thinking in terms of, am I using the tonal range? Am I using the tonal range? And, and Silver 3 really is designed to help you do that. If you start going through that, you're going to see your black and white images absolutely come alive because it's going to start bringing out those rich whites, those deep highlights. Don't be afraid of shadows. Don't be afraid of highlights. Be aware of them. Watch your clipping. Watch your details. Know what you're dealing with, but do not be afraid to really use that whole tonal range. And I think that uh, this needs to be talked about more because photographers, I think, really have become afraid to use the whole tonal range. We've been HDRified and processed, and we see a lot of stuff without a lot of contrast. These images, most of them have an immense amount of dynamic range, but they also use the whole contrast. An image can be HDR and still have pure black shadows and pure white highlights, or close just a little bit to it. Again, uh, really spent a lot of time on presets to take images that maybe, maybe were great, but weren't quite doing it for us and really bring those out. Because in black and white, we can really take these scenes and take advantage of contrast. And you're gonna find uh, pure contrast presets are very versatile for really bringing out intense, bold black and white looks. And you'll notice at the same time, we're getting variants of this, we're still maintaining the dynamic range. And we can of course say, okay, let's, let's apply something intense and then let's do the clip grad mod that's right at the top here, bring back some of those highlights a little bit, make sure we're not clipping. The control is all in your hands. And again, let's go here and uh, let's let's take this one and do it from the top. So I'm going to reset it, and we're going to go down, and I'm going to find... I could, I, could, I could try all kinds of different presets that would work good on this. I'm actually going to use the Anselm, which is one of our, our magic zonals. And so what it's going to be doing is it's actually doing some of that dynamic highlight control for dynamic range. And just look at this. Anselm is designed 
to give you deep contrast while maintaining those dynamic ranges. I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to use the O vignette. I really like this one because unlike a vignette that simply darkens the edges, you can use the O vignette to draw attention exactly where you want it, and then you can move it. So obviously our subject is right here. I'm going to move it there, and I'm going to dial it back just a little bit. We can, of course, adjust the sliders on any of these at any time. So it's already looking really good. Um, let's actually go down here and just see what else we can do. First thing is we could do manipulations of the channels. So we have a good contrast range. Now I can come down here and say, well, give me give me some channel controls. You can see that some of these are inspired on classic uh, infrared, I mean, excuse me, classic black and white color filters that we would use on the camera. If you've ever shot black and white, you had your probably your orange 56, maybe your green 58. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply the orange 56 on this one to kind of bring out those rocks even more. And uh, let's go here. And just to show you guys that we don't need to be limited, I'm going to manually add a gradient. Okay, so here's our gradients. We have the ones that were added by the preset. I'm going to add a little gradient right here, right to the edge of the grass. And what I'm going to use that for is I'm going to darken down that foreground. Look at the beautiful highlights that we have in the flowers and stuff there. I'm going to bring it about three quarters of a stop down. And what it's going to do is it's going to keep that rich, nice texture. There's lots of stuff I want to see in there but it's not going to have it be so bright, so my eye is easily going to move over it right up here to the detail in the subject that just is, is full of detail and sharpness. Okay, now let's go down. It looks great as it is. I could print it this way, but uh, the way I actually showed it was getting into some of these uh, tonal presets, the color tints. This is kind of a classic one. It's just a split tone. This is also an image that I might leave black and white and then take into Photoshop and do a highly detailed uh, platinum type conversion in uh, using using the platinum actions in Photoshop, but the 3D platinum actually does look amazing on this. Again, it's giving us different levels of color manipulation. Let me just reset that. Here's the black and white, and here's the 3D platinum. By having different levels of of tinting on different shades and different tones, what we end up with what we end up with is the richness and depth. Now you can see because 3D Platinum was a was a uh, gradient that it did do a little bit of overriding of other gradients. So I'm going to go back and add that exposure gradient to the foreground a little bit and just darken that down a little bit more. And there we go. Lots of dynamic range, lots of detail. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever look fits your visualization, we all need to decide what we're trying to get to with our images. What's in our mind's eye and how can we make the images absolutely beautiful. But the one thing we know is that if you have the tools, you know how to use the tools, you're not afraid to mix and match and control, what we've seen with silver is that you're going to get rich contrast, you're going to be able to utilize that whole range, and you are going to get absolutely beautiful black and white. You're going to perfect those black and whites, and I think you guys are going to love what you can do on your images. So I hope this somewhat extended training video kind of helped you guys know the features of Silver and know how to combine presets and details and, and gradients and, and manual adjustments and all that stuff to get the looks that you want in your black and white. Let me know what you want to see in more videos and if you want to do some, some more hardcore studies of individual images and really pick them apart. That's certainly something that we might do in the future on our YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, head over to Photographic School on YouTube and join us over there. You guys have fun with Silver 3. We're here to help if you need it.